Peace and Shalom Israel. Before we start the lesson, hit the notification button because we upload lessons every week and I don't want you to miss a single one of them. Like, comment, subscribe, and if there's a topic you would like for us to cover, we'll see what we can do. So until next time, cue the music. All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel Bible Studies program. And as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. With that being said, the title of this lesson is The Prayers of the Righteous. The Prayers of the Righteous. And we want to look at um, you know, how the believers in the Bible petitioned God, how, how they petition God and the faith that they had to do in order to get an answer or response from God. Now, obviously, God doesn't work like a genie in a bottle. He doesn't just work on your command. He is a sovereign God. He is a sovereign, sovereign father. Right. But you can we can approach him if we are righteous, because it is the prayers of the righteous. So right out of the gate, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. And we're going to jump to Proverbs 28 and 9, because Without this, you may as well forget about, you can just forget about your uh, your prayer, right? So we wanna to go to Proverbs 28, Proverbs 28 and verse nine. Proverbs 28 and verse nine. Now in verse nine it says, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law even his prayer shall be abomination, right? So if, if, if you're one of those people who don't think that you have to keep the law, if you're someone who believes that that law is not necessary, then your prayers are not even uh, listened to. He doesn't even listen to them. They're abomination. They're offense to him. He's offended that you don't want to be in covenant in him. Okay, you don't want to do anything that I tell you to do, but yet you're coming to ask me for something right so it's one of those type of things that those type of relationships is it, it, it is a give and take uh, relationship you have to give the most high faith you have to give the most high devotion you have to give the most high obedience okay it is a give and take and then he is a loving father right so there is a certain give and take there okay even, even the messiah got to give him some obedience got to give him some faith you know so on and so forth there's so it's not just a one-sided selfish selfish relationship because we can do that sometimes we can be one-sided we can be selfish but no 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 it does not work that way okay brothers and sisters so we're gonna go ahead and uh keep moving forward and let's jump over to james let's go to the book of james okay and when we get to the book of james we want to start at chapter four and I'm going to uh, start reading over in verse one. OK, and James says, from hence come wars and fightings among you. Come they not hence even of your lust that war is in your members like that's what you're all about. You're all about fighting and bickering and going back and forth and all that because it's in you. It's a part of you. Right. And he says, you lust and you have not. You kill and you desire to have. You cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you have not because you ask not. OK, ye ask and receive not because you ask amiss. Now, amiss, you, that means you ask wrongly, right? Improperly or wrongly. Right. So you're asking for the wrong thing or you're asking you're coming, you're coming at him the wrong way or you're asking for the wrong motives, things like that. So you ask something you have not because you ask improperly or wrongly. Right. OK, there are no magic words, but just to your, your intentions. He looks into your heart. Why are you asking for this? You know, that kind of thing. Right. And he said, uh, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusted to envy, right? So he's just saying, it's like, you know, this is how, this is how our makeup is. A lot of times our, our prayers are not getting answered 
because of our corruptness, right? Because of something in us that we need to get out, okay? It doesn't mean that you have to be, if you have a shortcoming or something like that, it doesn't mean that you, you're stuck that way, right? It's something in us. Okay, there's something about us, something in us, there's a spirit in us that needs to come out. Okay, the reason why we're not getting some, some, some prayers answered. Something in there, you have to do some soul searching, you have to dig deep, and you have to work out, work out that salvation, right? You got to work that thing out. But we're talking, we're talking about answering prayers. The prayers of the righteous, okay, the prayers of the righteous, it availeth much. We have to understand that. So you have to be practicing righteousness, right? And so when it says, you know, that, you know, go and be perfect, that doesn't mean that, oh, you've never sinned ever in your life. You've never, you will never, ever stumble again. It's just that some of those things that, some of those stumbling blocks that were before you, uh, in the past, they're not in the future. Some of the things you fell short of in the past, they're not in your current situation. They're not in the future. I mean, you're working on it. You're working on righteousness. You're building your righteousness a little every single day, right? A little by little by little. You're getting a little bit better every single day. At first, you come as, as babes in Christ, right? You come as babes and you get better and better and better, meaning sinning less, 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 right? You should have less sin or should be committing less sin today than you were last week because you're supposed to be getting better and better and better incrementally, right? Okay, so whether that's eating uh, eating properly, uh, whether that's observing the Sabbath, whether that's keeping certain, you know, obviously we need to keep all the commandments that apply to us, and I say that apply to us, right? You need to keep any co uh, commandments that are that apply to you, and you're just supposed to be getting better and better and better. And hey, it can be overwhelming, but guess what? Work on one thing at a at a time. Okay, work on one thing at a time. You didn't commit every sin all in one instant, right? You did a little bit here, a little bit there, and so forth, so forth, you know, so on and so forth. So the same thing with righteousness. Get a little bit better because if you're not practicing righteousness, he's not trying to hear your, he's not trying to hear your prayers. It's, it's just not. Those prayers are abominable to him. Abominable. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and continue. We're in James. We're going to go on over to John, right? Let's go on over to John. And it's going to be John chapter 17, actually. John chapter 17. Okay. So John chapter 17 and 8. For I have given, uh, given unto them the words which thou gave it to me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. Okay. Verse 9. And I pray for them, and I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Right? He said they belong to you. Right? And 10. And all mine are thine, and everything that belongs to the Messiah belongs to the Father. And thine are mine. Okay? And I am glorified in them. Okay, these people who are coming to the Messiah. There's a lot of people who are not dealing with the Messiah, don't want to have nothing to do with him, right? And now I am no long, I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name whose those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Okay, so he just says, so we can all be in one accord, right? One as we are, right? I am John, that's eight and nine. Okay, so that's all I wanted. That's all I want for that particular um, passage of scripture. Okay, so he just said, like, they're still in the world. I'm not in the world anymore, right? But keep them, okay? Keep them. I'm glorified in them. Keep them, right? So he's, so this is how the Messiah is praying for you. He's praying to the Father on your behalf, right? So it's, a, like I said, it, it's, it is a, it's a sincere conversation. It's a sincere uh, a, a request. It's a sincere petition, right? There are no magic words or anything like that. I know there's some people out there, there's some prayer warriors out there, and they sound very, very eloquent in speech, and they seem like they just have prayer like poetry, right? But it's really not about that. It's the sincerity of your heart and just being real at the time, right? And you're not, you don't want to ask wrongly or amiss, right? So we are in John... 17 now we're going to go to first john 3. let's go to first john there we go chapter 3 and all i want from first john chapter 3 is i want verse 22. and he said and whatsoever we ask 
we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. So let me ask you, is obedience pleasing in his sight? And does that line up with Proverbs, right? Does that line up with Proverbs 28 and 9, right? So he said, we're going to keep his commandments and, you know, we're going to ask him. We know we'll get it because we try to keep his commandments. That's what that, our goal is to keep his commandments. And to them, it's synonymous with being in covenant with the father, right? We're trying to stay in covenant with the father. That's that. That's what they're talking about. That's what it's all about. Right. And so they're not asking to miss. Now, for instance, if you're praying and you disregard the law, automatically you're asking a miss automatically. OK, automatically you're asking a miss. All right. So let's just keep that in mind. Now, with that, we're going to go over to uh, Hebrews. Chapter 11. Okay, Hebrews chapter 11, and it's just one verse, which is verse 6. Now he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, you have to be all about, first of all, without faith, forget it, right? Obedience. Faith. These, these, these are elements of how you get your prayers answered. See, a lot of people, they want to run to the faith and that's it, but no obedience. Uh, no, it's going to take both. Okay? So you have to believe that he is, right? You have to believe that, um, that Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, however you want to say. Some people say Yahweh Shai and all that, but you have to believe that he is Messiah, that he is the living son of God, that he's on the right hand of the Father right now. Right. You have to believe that you have to believe the father is the creator of all. OK, that he is above all. He is the creator of all things. OK, through through his son. But you have to believe that. OK, you have to believe he is whom the scripture says he is. OK, that's part of that's part of your faith right there. Okay, you can't be double minded. You can't be riding the fence. You can't be trying to figure out. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, you know, no, no, you can't do that. Okay, you cannot do that. All right. You have got to believe you have got to have that straight in your mind. Okay, this is how you get your prayers. This is how you avail it much in the Lord. Right. This is how this is how you get there. Okay, so this is uh, Hebrews. Now we're going to go to 1 John, right? We're going to go to 1 John, and we're going to do chapter 5. We're going to do 1 John and chapter 5, okay? And we're moving rather quickly. So when we get to chapter 5, we just want 14 and 15. And it says... And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. OK, that's the confidence. That's part of the faith. That's part of the confidence that you have. You know, you can have this confidence if you know you're not asking a miss. You know, you're not being selfish. Right. You know that you're praying. You, you know, you're praying for. Um, 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 the fruit of the spirit. You're praying for you know, um, you know your health or someone else's health. You praying for uh, the type of prosperity that's going to help you and your family. You're praying for your neighbor. You're praying for your enemy. Okay. You're praying for uh, to be free from certain strongholds in your life. You got. You're asking. You know you're not asking them. You're praying for the right thing. Okay. You're praying for the right thing. Some people might think, oh, well, you know, if I pray for money and prosperity, that, that that's wrong. No, no, no. It's the love of money. It's not the money. It's like, what are you going to do with it? OK, what are you going to do with it? Oh, you can pray for it. You say, OK, well, I'm praying so I can get out of debt. I'm praying so that I can buy this property, you know, this 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 farm so I can just live, uh, you know, on the land and grow my own food and, and take care of my animals and things like that. I'm praying for that. Right. You're praying for stuff like that. You're praying for someone to get over a particular sickness or something like that. Right. Th those type of things you're not asking to miss over there. So and, and, and like I said, if I circle back to money, that's not a problem as long as you're not asking a miss. 
long as you're not asking to miss, there is not a problem, okay? It just really depends, as long as you're not asking to miss, right? So that's how that goes. So we're gonna go on over to, where are we? We are in 1 John, we're gonna go over to Matthew, Matthew 17. We're gonna go on over to Matthew 17. Let's see, where are we? Let's mark, we'll go to Matthew 17. 17, 17, 17, and 14. Okay, let's start over in 14. And he said, And when they were come to the multitude, they came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he's fallen into the fire and oft into the waters. Okay, so in this case, um, a lunatic, it comes, from, it comes from a meaning like moonstruck, right? It could be from, you know, like epilepsy or something like that, right? It just comes from Moonstruck. They may not know what epilepsy was back then, but someone who, you know, kind of, you know, goes crazy or something. And I'm, I'm inclined to believe that it may be something that we know as epilepsy today because of what happened, because it can happen all of a sudden, right? It can happen all of a sudden and then they could collapse and they're, you know, they're having convulsions and they're trying to swallow their tongue and things like that. It can happen at any moment, right? It can happen at any time. And so that's what we're talking about there. Um, and like it says, have mercy on my son for he uh, is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. So it doesn't matter. He, 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 he harms himself on accident. He harms himself. And so there's a huge problem there, right? So he harms himself and he's asking to be cured, right? Asking to be cured. So we're going to go, where are we? 17. And 16, it says, and I brought him to the disciples and they could not cure him, right? So he brought him over, taught, brought his son to the disciples. They couldn't get rid of what was uh, ailing him, right? Then Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. See, this is all, but he believed. He believed, he said, okay, the disciples can't do it. You know, let me ask, the, let me ask this guy, okay? He can do it, let me ask him, right? And he said, uh, in verse 20, he said, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, I told you, it's, it's without faith is impossible, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, you cannot do it, okay? For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, and you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto thee, right? So it doesn't even matter. He's just saying that's, that's, that's how powerful your prayers can be if you have the faith behind it. So when you go in, you ask for the prayer. When you go in and you already has this doubt, as like James said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you have this doubt, you have this seed of doubt, it's gonna overshadow your prayers, right? And then of course 21 says, albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now he tells you exactly how you do it. These things, this can happen but only by prayer and fasting. When we fast and we deny ourselves something, you want a petition from God, then you need to deny yourself something. Lean on him, man shall not live by bread and water alone, right? By bread alone, okay? I threw in the water, but man can't do, okay? So you have to, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's not so much what you say, but it's how you posture yourself. It's how you approach God. So in this case, you have faith, then you ask your prayer and you're fasting, you have your prayer, you do that. Good, perfect time to do it is on the Sabbath. Get all your prayer, get those prayers out. I mean, you can pray at any time. Don't get me wrong. You can pray at any time. But the Sabbath is a good day to get your prayers out. All the things you want to ask and petition and you need help with, all those things, the Sabbath is a perfect day to do it, a perfect time to do it. But yet so few of us actually do it. We don't go to him and get this thing right. Okay? That's, that's what we need to do. We have to always keep that in mind. He's given, he's given us a plan to do it. He said, this is how you do it. So he's pointed out right here. He said, it ain't gonna happen. He said, albeit this kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. That's the only way you're gonna make it happen, right? 
So he's giving us an idea, right? It's no, no, no magic words or anything like that. He said, this, this is how you get it done. Let's go over to James. Let's go on over to James and we're gonna go to chapter five of James. And we'll pick that up at 13. He says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. If any marry, let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Uh, let's see here. And I want to get 15 up to 16. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one another for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He's saying so a lot can get done with, with, with prayer. Okay. And he gave, he gave some examples right there in the beginning, right? Uh, at 13. Okay. If any of you be afflicted, let him pray. Okay. So go ahead and pray. You, you're afflicted with something, pray about it, right? If any marry, let him sing songs, sing songs, praises, right? Songs where you, you, you are thankful, right? All right. The things that were, were, where you have this level of gratitude and you're exalting the father. OK, there's, there's some of the things that you and I can do. Exalt the father, be grateful and you do this in prayer. OK, so let us always keep that in mind. OK, let's 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 always keep that in mind. OK. And then he said, if any of you sit, let them go to the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. OK, so that's when if you if you do have a gathering or something like that, that's why you don't want to forsake the assembly to, uh, to gather one another, too, because if you have a group of righteous men laying hands on you, praying over you, anointing you with oil. OK, then you can you can definitely get some more stuff done. OK, you can get some things done. All right. Now, it don't always take a group. OK, because we, we see many of the prophets lay their hands on somebody. Boom. And they're healed. OK. But I'm just saying in a group setting, hey, come together corporately. We are the body. So those are the things. Those are some of the things that we can do. Those are the things that we can get done. OK. If any of you sick, you let the, the, the elders bring it to the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. OK. And you do that by the because it's not us. We know it's the power that runs through us we know it's the spirit that runs through righteous men okay it's the spirit that runs through righteous men it's not it's not it's not the, it's not just the righteous man okay and it's good on him if he's righteous but the power comes from above okay let's keep that in mind please let's not lose sight of that the power comes from above okay and he said and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. OK, so he's going to get better. Right. And if he has committed a sin, they shall be forgiven him. So those all those things he's going to forgive those sins. Right. Isn't this what we want? This this is what we want. So now you continue in your righteousness. Right. He's cleaning the slate. You're, you're trying to practice righteousness. He's cleaning your slate. You're trying to practice righteousness. He's cleaning your slate. Right. So we have to use it. If, if you forgive, if you forgive the metaphor, or the analogy, I should say, if you forgive the analogy, it's kind of like you're trying to pay off a debt. Right. And then you have I don't know. It don't matter the amount, but you're paying ten dollars to, uh, to, to to to, you know, to start clearing out your debt. You're paying ten dollars a week. But every time you pay ten dollars a week, ten dollars, uh, 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 extra ten dollars is getting wiped off your debt. Right. So that, that that's really nice. That's really nice. As long as you're doing the right thing, as long as you're being diligent, as long as you are seeking him, as long as you are going after him. Just keep doing that, brothers and sisters. That's that's all it takes. Just keep doing that. All right. Just let's let's just keep that in mind. Let's just keep doing that. OK, so now we're going to go to Jeremiah twenty nine. Because we are in this predicament, we get a lot of people, and they're like, "Man, we're 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 in our captivity. What are we supposed to do? Um, you know, I'm trying to make a difference. You know, and, and they they worry about it. They were they're worried about it. But I say you really shouldn't 
I mean, being your captivity, you still have to do what you have to do, right? So if we go over to uh, 29, I'm going to show you something. In Jeremiah 29 and 4, Jeremiah 29, if I start at verse 4, this is what he said to them when they were in captivity, right? Okay? Around the Babylonian time. This is what he's saying when, when, when they're in captivity. And I'm going to go to Jeremiah 20. I'm going to start at 4, right? And he says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have cursed to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. This is what he said. Now, they're going into captivity. I want, I want you guys to keep that in mind. Are, you, you're, are we not in captivity right now, right? We're in captivity right now in the Americas, right? Really all over the world, right? So but this is what he said in verse 5. He said, build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them and take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take, take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace, right? See, so here we are right now. We're in North America, but I mean, we know Israel is everywhere. Okay, we know Israel is on all the continents, but um, look at what he said. Build houses, build gardens, eat, live your life, basically. Take wives, give your daughters to husbands. Get some wives for your sons and, 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 and seek the peace of that city. Try to live peaceably with all men. So we got a lot of people that have a lot of angst right now and upset because we're in a land of our captivity. They're awakened. They know who they are and they focus on the atrocities that have happened to us in the past and obviously recent atrocities in, in, in recent years too. And they look at that and then they want to do something right now. They want to pound on the tables right now. They want justice and they want reparations and they want all that. I get the emotion. I get it. But is it going to come right now just because we demand it? Or is it, gonna be, is, it come, is it going to come because of the Messiah? Upon his return. See, the reason it can't come now is because we need more righteousness. We need more obedience. We need more reconciliation back to the covenant. Getting back to the covenant. See, right now, he's waiting to come because he's, he's trying to get this consolidation. Who's going to be with him? Who is going to be called by his name? Who's going to seek him? Who's going to call out to him? Who's going to pray to him? How many? He's given time. He's not slow. He's not slack, as the word says. He's not slack. He's waiting on you or anybody else who's coming uh, into this new truth. You're trying to see other people awakening. Now, you're awakened, but maybe your neighbor's not awakened. You're awakened, but the guy at the superstore is not awakened. The guy at the, uh, at the, at the gym is not, is not awakened. The people over at the mall, they're not, you know, wherever you go, I'm talking through life. Some people still need to be awakened. He has other sheep, not of this fold. So in the meantime, you do Jeremiah 29. The verses that we just read, like in verse five, he said, build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives of your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. So if there is some peace where you are, okay, if you do have peace in that city, that's where your peace is going to come from. You're going to have some peace when somebody is not, when, when they're not after you. If, it, if at all possible, live peaceably with all men. You know, I you know, have some people where, you know, they get really upset because they're always, or, they, or we're constantly surrounded by people who have no respect for the Most High, right? They have no respect. They don't care about no laws. They just do their own thing. And some of us, we get upset. There's nothing you can do about that. Okay? Sometimes you're in a professional situation and it's not your time. You have to be a light. All right. Just let your conversation and your which means your behavior, your manner of life, your conduct, let that be your light. 
and minister to people that way because you have to work, because you have to feed your family, you have to pay your bills. But we get some people who get so upset and get bent out of shape because, oh, this person over here has bacon on their sandwich. They're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to do what they're going to do. The wheat and the tares are coming up together. The wheat and the tares are going to come up together. You go to a restaurant. Well, I don't go to a restaurant. Okay, understood. But for those of us who may still go to a restaurant, the guy at the next table and the woman at the next table, they're eating, you know, shrimp and crabs and, 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 and pork ribs and all that. They're eating all that, right? Nothing you can do about it. You can't just go. Nothing you can do about it. The wheat and tares are going to come up together. You you sit on a, a public bench uh, somewhere, a chair out there, after a woman sat there and she may be on her uh, cycle or something like that. What, what, what are you going to do? You're going to drive yourself crazy. Try to get peace and pray about that. Pray about that. The wheat and the tares are coming up together. Now, I understand there's some weakness out there. Guess what? You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. I know you have to endure it. And like he said, I pray for them that are in the world. They're not of the world. I'm not going to pray for the world, but I'm going to pray for them. That's what you're, that's how your prayer should, how, Lord, how can I navigate through this world? Keep me, shield me, protect me, protect my mind, protect my spirit. Basically put on the armor of God. Brothers and sisters, this is this is you are you're you're in you're you're in the fight now. You're in the spiritual warfare now. And prayer is one of your weapons. Prayer is one of your weapons. But how sharp that weapon is has to do on how righteous and faithful you are. How righteous and faithful you are. That's how sharp that weapon is. Let us not forget that. Okay, we're in Jeremiah. Let's go on over to Matthew 5. Let's go to Matthew 5. Okay, Matthew 5, 43. Let's go to 43 through 48. Matthew 5, 43, he said, and ye, <clears throat> ye have heard that it's been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despisefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of the Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on evil and on the good. And send it rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Like how is it different than anybody else, right? Do not even the publicans also. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. See, I was, I, I, I was just ranting about that, right? There's, there, yeah, you got enemies, you got, you got obstacles in your way and stumbling blocks, and you have enemies out there. You need to pray for that. Pray for them that take, steal from you. I mean, I've, I've had stuff stolen from me. Pray for them. A lot of stuff, I, hey, a lot of stuff I'm working on. But like I said, when, when I'm preaching to you, I'm, I'm preaching to me too. Pray for them. And you get better, you get knocked down, you get up, you get better. And you pray for them. You work on some things. You work on some things, but you, in the meantime, be righteous. Be righteous. Pray for them. Don't be as wicked as they are. Pray for them. Okay? Let's go over to Luke 23. Luke 23. Okay, 
Luke 23, and I'm going to start reading at 33. I just want two verses. Luke 23, 33, and 34. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his garment and cast lots, right? So, he's just prayed for some people who are currently doing him wrong. They're currently doing him dirty, meaning he's innocent. He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He just fed people, healed people, preached to people. That's it. Now, I understand the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, were losing their power. And he was gaining influence and he, they, you know, he didn't want, they didn't want the people looking at them sideways, giving them a side eye because of what they're teaching versus what this Messiah is teaching, right? But look, but, but, but look, in the middle of it, they're crucified. He's, he's up on the cross. He see what they're doing. Okay, what? Well, they parted his vestures, crown of thorn, nails in his hands and his feet and all that. Doing all this stuff to him, right? Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Did, did he pray amiss? Look at him versus you or I. Can we do that? Because he, he came and gave us an example. He, he, he definitely left an example. It's, it's a high mark, I tell you that. It, it, that bar is set high. Can you do it? This is why the Messiah can ask for pretty much whatever he wanted. He even said in one where he said, you know what? He told uh, what, what, what Peter, he said when they came to pick him up, okay, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was like, you know, if I wanted to ask the Father to send me a legion of angels, he'll do that. If I want, if, if that's what he wanted. The bar is set very, very high. Which tells me we, we still have some work to do, right? <laughs> we, we have work to do. As long as you're breathing, this job is not done. This walk is not done. As long as you and I are breathing, this walk is not done. Believe me, some, some, some things, you know, some things get easier for us as we practice righteousness. Some things get a little easier. But it's not done for as long as we're breathing. It is not done. So, let's move on. I'm going to Job 42. Okay, let's go on over to Job. Okay, and we're going to go to start at verse uh, 7, 42 and 7. 7 says, And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz and the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right. And my servant Job as my servant Job has. See, the way you talk, the way you talking to me, uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. And he says, verse 8, Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, and that you have spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. Okay, look, look, look at what he's saying. Okay, in verse 9 he said, So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the, ne the Namathite, went and did according as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord also accepted Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. See, since his friends, since Job's friends, since they were talking reckless, the Lord did not, no, 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 you can't ask me for anything. No, not you. 
I'll take it for Job on your behalf, but not you. You go to my servant Job because he's righteous. And through all, all the things he went through, all, all the things he went through, he still came correct. But you, you, you were talking reckless. All of you, you, you three, you were talking reckless, but not Job. So I will forgive you if you do this, if you take these bullocks and sacrifice, let Job offer up this burnt offering on your behalf and he prays for you on your behalf, then I'll forgive you. Then we'll be okay. Otherwise, I'll deal with you directly and you're not going to like it. Because I'm going to deal with you according to your folly. So we can deal with it according to your folly or we can deal, deal with it according to Job's righteousness. You see, the conduit that that, the, that that prayer channels through, right? See, Job was someone who didn't mind obeying God, didn't mind or and, and believed that the creator was who he said he was. So he had he had the elements. OK, we know that Job, we all heard the patience of Job. OK, we we are. He, he paid, what, hey, Lord, give it. Lord, take it away. What, hey, whatever the Lord want to do, that's that's on him. I'm just a humble servant. See the attitude? Even when Job's wife was talking cr crazy, curse, curse God and die. He ain't, he's not helping you. He's like, man, what woman, you crazy. You get up, get up out of here. He, you crazy. I'm, a, I'm just going to be happy because he does all these good things for me and everything. And, and when something bad happened, I didn't, now I curse him? No, 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 we're not doing that. You see? You, you see the difference? The affection, this, the prayers of the righteous, right? This is what we're talking about. Okay? Let's go to 1 Samuel. The prayers of the righteous. 1 Samuel 1, actually. 1 Samuel 1 and 1. Okay. Let's look at this. Now, there was a certain man of... Ramathane Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his son was Elkanah, the son of Joram, and the son of Elihu, the son of Tehu, the son of Zuth, and, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives, and the names of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of uh, Eli and Hophni and Phinehas, Phinehas, the priests of the Lord were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions, right? Gave, pretty much gave them their inheritance, right? But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as, and as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I, am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and forget thine handmaid and, and not forget thy handmaid but will give unto thy handmaid a man child then i will give him unto the lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head and it came to pass as she continued praying before the lord that eli marked her mouth now hannah she spake in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard 
Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken, right? So he he didn't hear he didn't hear her petition, right? She she was praying and she was just under her breath, right? Like she's mumbling under her breath. So he just thought she was just drunk. And Eli said unto her, How long would thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. He's I, she's basically I cried my heart out. I'm praying before the Lord. I'm asking, right? Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. The Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Okay, and I got, got one more verse. We're going to do 18. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her, her countenance was no more sad. So she cheered up, right? She, she cheered up. She, at first, she couldn't have a child, and she just, but she stayed faithful. What about us? We pray. We we want an answer, you know, in the next five minutes. We we, we want to pray, and we want we, we want the most high to click light right away. We we, we don't have any patience. We want to answer right then and there, this instant microwave society, this instant satisfaction, this instant gratitude. But she kept doing it year by year. She kept doing it. She kept asking. She prayed. She had sincerity of heart. We have a lot of examples here, brothers and sisters. We have examples of how our attitude should be. And we know later she, we know she had a child. But look at her attitude before, before the prayer was even answered. And the righteous man, Eli, he was interceding. He was like, you know what? Let, yeah, we're going to let that stand. We're going to let that, 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 that prayer stand. May the Lord grant you that, that prayer. So are we, are we understanding what's going on here? A righteous man. Now she had sincerity of heart. She kept her righteousness. She kept doing what she had to do. And she left. She satisfied. Said, you know what? Oh, it's cool. All right. If it's the Lord will, I'll get it. How's your attitude? Let's continue. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Okay. Acts 10, and we are going to. Do, 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 1 through 6. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, and centurion of the band called the Italian band. A devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he had looked upon him, he was afraid and said, What is the Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. Your prayers, multiple, plural, prayers, prayers. How often do we pray? I pray, but in my opinion, I don't pray enough. I can pray more. Okay, I do pray, but I can pray more. So plural, prayers, prayers. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. And he lodge with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Okay, so that, that, that's all I want. See, again, he goes to the righteous man. And a righteous man is going to tell you what, you know, what, what needs to be done. And all you got to do is do it. If a righteous man tell you, perhaps you should do it. Because sometimes the most high will answer you directly and sometimes he answers you indirectly. You have to have the discernment of the spirit to know the difference. You have to have the discernment of the Spirit to know when the Most High says, yes, no, wait. Let's 
Let's continue. Gonna go all the way to Genesis 18. Genesis 18. Okay, Genesis 18 and 20. We're gonna do 20. We'll start at 20 Go and stop at 33. So 20, it says, and the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom, but Adam stood yet before the Lord. Abraham, I'm sorry, excuse me, not, not Adam, Abraham. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, or perhaps, there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place of the fifty righteous that are, that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within a city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, uh, Behold now, I have, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. You know, so he's just like, pardon me, I mean no disrespect, right? Peradventures, there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, if I find, if I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for the for the forty sake. And he and he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. So he is bargaining all the way down. And he said, Behold now. I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his and the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Now let me just go ahead and let you know <laughs> that Abraham was, he was petitioning hard. He was petitioning hard, okay? If it's 50, will you not destroy? Will you let the city stand? If it's 45, would you let the city stand? If it's 40, if it's 30, if it's 20, will you let the city stand? And the Lord kept agreeing to all those lower, lower numbers, right? But guess what? The only reason that Abraham had space to talk like that, to petition like that, is because Abraham was righteous and faithful. He was obedient and faithful. That's the only reason why. His petition, his prayer, he, he's going back and forth with the Lord. He said, hey, please, hey, I mean, no disrespect. I know I am just dust and ashes. I know I'm nothing, but let me ask you. Brothers and sisters, the only reason why he was able to do that was because he was righteous. Because the prayers of the righteous, and this is the petition he's asking back and forth, because he's righteous, he's able to do that. If we are righteous, we can get our prayers answered. But you have to be in this walk. You have to be in this walk. That's the only way it works. Let's go to Deuteronomy 9. The only way it's going to work, okay? We'll jump around a little bit. Deuteronomy 9, start at 12. He said, And the Lord said unto me, Arise, 
and get thee down quickly from hence. For thy people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt have corrupted themselves, and they were quickly turned aside <clears throat> out of the way which I commanded them, and they have made them a molten image. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of them a nation mightier and greater than they. So I turned and came down from the mountain, and the mount burned with fire, and the, two and the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. And I looked, and behold, ye had sinned against the Lord your God, and turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord had commanded you. And I took the two tablets and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. And I fell down before the Lord uh, as at the first 40 days and 40 nights. And I did neither eat bread nor drink water. There's a fasting again because all your sins, which you sin in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. OK, so look at look at look at what he's saying. OK, so let's go. We're we, we reading up to 20. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure, wherewith the Lord was wroth against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. He listened to me. Why? Because Moses was righteous. Okay? Are we getting this? 21. Okay. <clears throat> and let me drop down to 23. Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you. Then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and be, and ye believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. Thus I fell down before the Lord forty days and forty nights, as I fell down at the first, because the Lord had said he would destroy you. I prayed therefore unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, destroy not thy people in thy inheritance. Which, has, which thou has redeemed through thy greatness, which thou has brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand, okay? And 27, remember thy servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look not unto the stubbornness of this people, nor to their wickedness, nor to their sin, okay? So Moses is saying, okay, so forget what they were doing. And remember your promise that you made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm praying for this people. Now, I want, I want you to consider something in your prayers. You and I have already met, you know, other brothers and sisters, right? Other Israelites. And they may have walked amiss, right? They, they may have done something wrong. I've done something that just pricked you. You didn't like it. You didn't think it was right and stuff like that. Right? Now, the question is, would you pray for them? Would you pray for that, you know, that the Lord would have mercy on them and turn them around or correct you if you're wrong? Would you pray like that? Because Moses had to deal with Israelites all day. You, you do it every now and again. You, you, somebody you don't like. And all. Moses had to do that day and night. He had to deal with the entire nation of people going backwards and being wicked. You can't deal with one person or a handful and just pray for them. You, you, you can't do that because Moses had to deal with it. Well, we have to realize that we're not always perfect. OK, we have done. We have wrong. People have wronged us. Guess what? But whether you believe it or not, you have wronged someone. Whether you believe it or not, you have wronged someone. You've done someone wrong. You have sinned against someone. Ultimately, we sin against the father and the Messiah. Ultimately. But whether you believe it or not, you have wronged someone. So, do you pray for them? Because Moses had to pray for an entire nation that was screwing up. Moses was offended all the time. He has the law and looking at someone who, who know better. Some people who just know better. And they're still screwing up. So what about you? What about you and I? What are we going to do? You're going to pray for them? All right, let's go ahead and get... <clears throat> I have some bonus scriptures down there, but let me go ahead and do Daniel real quick. We'll go there first. 
and then we'll close it out. Let's go to the book of Daniel. There we go. Daniel 9. Daniel 9. There we go. Daniel 9, let's do 2 to 6 real quick. And in the first year of the reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the numbers of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Okay. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek uh, by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes look at the posture that he took i got a lesson if you, you guys want to check it out different a little different from this lesson and it's called uh teach us how to pray so look on this channel and look for teach us how to pray right and it's really about the posturing and how we position ourselves right because this whole thing of sackcloth and ashes and fasting and all that is in there so um it's not the exact same lesson i don't it's not all the same scriptures it's a complete it's a different lesson but it does have to do with prayer and teach us how to pray right it's a different it's a, another different set of scriptures right with a few a few overlap but not that many okay and he said and, and i set my face unto the lord god to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes and i pray unto the lord my god and i made my confession and said O lord the great and dreadful god keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that what keep his commandments. Look at what Daniel just said. We're starting to get the secret here. Five, we have sinned and, and committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, Listen to a righteous man, which spake in thy name to our kings and our princes and our fathers and to all the people of the land. Okay, we're going to drop down to uh, 13 real quick. And as is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet may we not, uh, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Look, look at the attitude. Look at the attitude. 14. Therefore, has the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obey not his voice. Okay? Are we listening? Okay? But we obey not his voice. 15. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee, uh, gotten thee renowned. As at this day, we have sinned and we have done wickedly. Look at that. He's just confessing. It's the same thing in your prayer. You go to prayer, just let it all out. Who are you lying to? You pray to the most high, let it all out. I screwed up. This is what I did. This is what I, I sinned against you and this is how I did it. This is what happened. Who exactly are you lying to? Who are you, who are you covering for? Okay? He just said, hey, we sinned against you. We broke the covenant. We, we sinned. We're wrong. Okay? 16. Now we're going to go 16 to 23. 16. O oh Lord, <clears throat> according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Everybody around us, right? Now, therefore, O Lord, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline thy ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolation in the cities which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplication before thee for our righteousness but for thy great mercies not because we're so great right O lord O lord hear O lord forgive O lord hearken and do de defer not for thy own sake O my god for thy city and thy people are called by thy name and while i was speaking and pray and praying and confessing my sin very important and the sin of my people israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, while I was speaking in the prayer, even the man Gabriel, 
whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me, and he talked with me, and said, O Daniel, I have now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Daniel was a righteous man. Okay, do we understand? Are, are we getting it? See, Daniel was righteous. So he said, as soon as, soon as your supplication came up, Lord, dispatch. Dispatch Gabriel and say, hey, go help out my servant. Are we starting to get it? Soon as it was time, you righteous, boom, dispatch him. Hey, give him some skill and understanding. Let him understand. Let him interpret. And he was praying for himself. He was confessing for himself. Hey, I'm, uh, I sinned. I wicked. He think too highly of himself. And he said it for Israel too. They sin, they're wicked. And we don't deserve. We, we don't deserve this mercy. We, we, really, we really don't. But we asking you according to your mercy, not, but not according to our righteousness. I'm asking according to your mercy. See, there's some clues on how to do this, right? So you, when you're in your prayer life, pray for yourself and pray for your brothers and sisters. Confession. And you have faith. See, so he's giving us clues when we break down each little piece, little, little elements. Okay, so what did he do? Oh, sackcloth and ashes. Stuff, meaning humbling yourself, mourning, crying, being sincere. Okay, I'm not saying you have to cry every time you pray. I'm not saying that. But what I'm just saying is that you have a great matter. You got something weighing on you that heavily. You need something big time. Then you might need to do some big time praying. So, we've understand through this lesson that the prayers need to come through the righteous and the prayers of the righteous are answered and that you and I need to practice righteousness so that our prayers can be answered. We also learned that how we approach God matters because we may end up asking amiss. So I just want to point out some of these things for each of us to remember and consider when it comes to our prayers and when we're wondering whether or not our prayers are getting answered or not. So I hope someone has gotten some understanding that somebody has, somebody has been edified. So you go ahead and check out the other uh, lesson on the channel, Teach Us How to Pray, and you'll get even more of this type of stuff. and a little bit deeper understanding. So until next time, search the scriptures, improve all things. Shalom Israel.